Let's take a look at your Kastner Cup race grid. On the inside of the front row, the 18, that is Dan Gaywaller. The number two uh, starting position goes to the 184 of Alex Ames out of Superior, Wisconsin. The 11 CP is Joe Carr out of Petaluma, California. Carnation, Washington's 98 of Bill Hart. David Gott in the 80. The 27 is Jason Ostrowski out of Riverside, Illinois. Uh, Cesar Granados in the 116 will start 7th. Starting 8th is the 95 of Tony Drews. Starting 9th is the 14 of John Freimark. Alongside is the 317 of Ryan Murphy. In row 6, the 28 of David Amis. Jesse Darrow in the 51. The row 7 entries are the 62 of Mike Jackson and Jerry Barker. Row 8, the 114 of Philip Gott and Pete Passan in the 44. The next row is the 197 of Sean Alexander, the 144 of Alexander Schlesinger. The 10th row is the 17 of Tim Slater and the 717 of Michael Dewart. The 11th row is the 30, uh, 13 of Brian McEldowney and Brendan Alexander. Row 14 is the 74 of Brian Basilton and the 146 of Greg Thompson. Tom Reese on the inside of the next row and the 441 of Karen Mennett Jacobson. Uh, alongside out of Elk Park Lake, Wisconsin. Steve Myers in the 181 out of Ames, Iowa. George Harmuth will start to, in the 28th position in the number 7. Starting 29th is the 10A of Henry Morrison. Dave Riddle in the 10 to start 30th. And Kurt Johnson in the 31 out of Fairfield, California. Uh, we'll uh, go racing from there. We've got Will Hart, Eric Jacobson, Chuck Gee, Robert Lang, Pat Darrow, Morty Dunst, and Brian Holland as well. They did not start in their uh, qualifying race uh, or nor take times, so we're not sure if they'll be added to the back of the field, but all triumphs uh, in the, in this one. Uh, there is, of course, a Bill Hart's 98, that is a 1957 Devin TR3. Uh, the Carnation Washington that's uh, listed here, so but this should be the Caster Cup, all triumphs uh, on this race Sunday. And just to remind our race fans before we go, continue with our featured group, to, it's a little breezy out there, so please secure all your tents, umbrellas, easy ups. We don't want anything flying around, so make sure, just a reminder to secure all of those things. by two up the hill for the Krasner Cup. And we're looking for the green flag in the air and we're racing. Into turn one. like all of our race competitors clean through turn one down the hill in three. Two by two, a little battle there going to Sargento. This is a seven lap race.
that heavy break in zone of five. We got that lead pack breaking off under the Corvette bridge. That lead pack's made about a 20 car length gap going into eight. Finding their P's and Q's under the Speedville Bridge. Krasner Cup here at Road America WeatherTech International Challenge with Brian Redmond. First lap of our featured race. Of these triumphs uh, out in full force in uh, many of their race groups. This will be uh, kind of a special race for uh, many of these drivers, uh, an extra one, so to speak, uh, as uh, this is a separate group. This is considered our uh, group 13, if you will. And so these cars will uh, still see the racetrack, uh, of course, yet to race again this afternoon. But our Caster Cup feature underway here at America's National Park of Speed. Always love seeing these cars here uh, as well. Open cockpit. Many of them really get to see the driver working. Tony Garmy out of Buckley, Washington at 1967 TR25. Dan Gaywhaler in that second spot for number 18. That is a, a 69 Triumph GT. Alex Amy's the 184. 595 of Brian Hallett. David got in the number 80. That is your top five as we completed lap number one of seven here in our Caster Cup. The Weather Tech International Challenge with Brian Redden. Bottoms. Ooh, the king. Number 47, Tony Garmy, making a pretty sizable lead now on that second lap that we're down the pace there. Three wide coming out of 10. <laughs> they just left that shot with the three wide for a moment. Yep, yeah, the game. You've seen three wide at uh, down the hill of three. You've seen three wide at five. Don't really want to see more than one at the King. <laughs> but uh, here we have a uh, pass at the King as well. It's just difficult to do. You're offline. It's hard to gauge the speed you're coming into the King. Obviously, you're not sure the person in front of you is, sees you in the mirror. So Tony Garmy completes lap number two here at Road America. Over Dan Gaywhaler. Alex Amis, Brian Hallett, David Gott, Bill Hart at 98. 1957 Devon CR3. We've got a nice pack of cars coming up the hill of 14. Just 
a whole smattering of different age groups, of course. With some of these cars. You have the uh, 97 machine of Brandon Alexander. That's 1966 Ambro. Will Hart, the 222, has the uh, Peyote Special, Mark II. A couple of Spitfires out there. Harold, here are 4A. GT6. 1969, I believe, is the newest car until you get to the 1980 Triumph TR8 for Joe Carr in the 11 CP that was listed in the field. or so. I believe there is a 79 uh, Huffaker in there too. That was uh, Kurt Johnson out of Fairfield, California was entered into the event but I don't uh, recall seeing it. The Triumph, a uh, brand of just exquisite design. The, the lines of these cars are fantastic. If you have some of the open cockpit type, we have a couple of close cockpit types. You kind of see the design influence that this had and you know, several of the close cockpit cars in this one. You see a little bit of that design in the uh, Nissan 240Z. They, they look very similar. Yeah, definitely in similar bot. Yeah, definitely very, very similar. dynamics in the period. Yeah, very similar. Uh, similar shapes. And we got a nice group of cars that was battling trading positions here on the camera. So there are battles throughout the racetrack right now. But Tony Garmi currently in that top spot. As he goes by, got four laps to go. Garmi, Gaywiller, Amy Solid, God, still your top five. Robert Lang has gotten around Bill Hart. In that sixth spot, Hart back to seventh. John Freimark in eighth. Cesar Granados in the 116 is ninth. And the 27 with Jason Ostrowski in that uh, GT6. It looks like the number 14 currently in seventh position, Josh, uh, John Freimark kind of leading that gaggle of cars through the long straightaway here into turn one, trying to defend his position. Looks like we have a little bit of an off-road excursion here. Trying to drive back onto course here. And it uh, looks like driver wisely looked up in the mirror and saw that there was a uh, gaggle of cars coming and did make some contact with the tire barrier, but did uh, drive away. Yeah, very impressed that he was able to do a little bit of a love tap on that wall and continue safely. We'll see if he decides to oh, finish the race. They're a little wobbly on the body. Yeah, looks like the, uh, the uh, right front uh, and the uh, under tray, the underskirt of the uh, front bumper has been knocked loose on that car. And it's getting pretty windy out there. So race fans, just a reminder to get those tents, your easy ups, your umbrellas, anything that could potentially blow away. Make sure you tie those down. Don't want to lose anything on this uh, race Sunday. 13, 14 mile an hour winds today here at uh, America's National Park. The speed a little bit more breezy than usual. You can 
can see the Ferrari, uh, the Ferrari Corral, Devin, uh, the tent is starting to blow in the breeze. Yes. So if you haven't checked that out, they will be getting on course here soon in about an hour this time. That's going to be so much fun to watch. Brian Howlett. Fourth place just across the start finish stripe. Your leaders working into turn three, of course. Robert Lang has moved into the fifth spot. I'm wondering, perhaps, if that car in turn six may have been David God in the 80. Dropping yeah, through the order indeed. Yeah, I believe order, that yep. may be uh, maybe that 80 machine of David God. You're right, Eric. There he comes. Just saw him there coming up the hill in the pit lane. We'll get a number for sure, and we can kind of see a little bit more of what happened to that vehicle. It was reported that he did tap the tire wall. Safe barrier. We could definitely see that there was the damage to the uh, right front nose and the under underskirt of the bumper. Number 47, Tony Garvey, on top here for the Kastner Cup. Three to go. comes the number 47, Tony Garvey, across the line. With two laps to go, we'll see the white flag next time by.
and white flag one to go for the number 47 Tony Carmi has been in the lead since the opening lap and has kept it continues adding to his gap his fast lap of the race came on that second lap of the Number 40, uh, wait, in the number 25, actually, Morty Dunst moves up into that sixth spot. Great run out, out of him. Looking at John Frymark. Trying to make it back into that seventh spot. He's had a group of cars following him all race. Tony Garvey in that opening spot. your race leader, Tony Garvey. Coming up the hill for the last time, seeing the checkered flag. And there it is, number 47, Tony Garvey. Wins the Kastner Cup here at Road America, the WeatherTech International Challenge with Brian Redmond.
All right, Victory Lane is uh, going to get uh, very cozy in a minute here with this Kastner Cup. And uh, right now, that is Tony Garmy climbing out of that number 47 out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Excuse me, Garmy uh, out of uh, Buckley, Washington, rather, in the 1967 Triumph TR25. Matt standing by down in Victory Lane. Thanks, Matt. Great job down in Victory Lane. And uh, Brian Redmond will handle uh, all of those duties on the podium. And obviously, different opinions on the racing surface, but it's uh, very fast and a lot of center corner speeds. Center corner speeds are up this weekend uh, for these vintage cars.